SWBA, students will be able to graph quadratic equations. Today we're going to learn how to graph and what they look like. And we're going to um, introduce this idea. We're going to start this lesson today. We're going to finish it up on Tuesday. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. He's like, I have an R in the same place, that's okay. Okay. Um, so, quadratic equations. We're going to graph them. This is section 91 and 92 actually combined, which is why we're not finishing it today. We're going to finish it up on Tuesday. So we're going to get a good head start today. <clears throat> so we spent a lot of time looking at linear equations, which can be written as y equals mx plus b. Do you remember what we called this form? Sloping. Slope intercept form. form. Very good. Slope intercept form. Woo! So what's the degree of this equation? What's the highest power we see on an x-axis? One. One. We saw every x to the first, right? So the degree of this equation was one. And what does the graph always look like? A straight line. And it was always a line. So an example could be like, it could look like this. Or it might have looked like this. Or like this. Whatever it was, it was always a straight line, right? Were there any curves? Does it ever turn or anything like that? No, it's always just a line. Okay? So, and that was even kind of word in the word linear. We look in the word linear, we see line. Now, a quadratic equation is written in the format ax squared plus bx plus c. What's different about what's written here versus what we had? Okay, what's different? Um, so, on this one, but compared to what we had even on that board to the left there, what's the difference now? What's it equal to? Y. That's the only thing that changed. Because now it's equal to the Y, which we know is the output of a function. Remember, X is the input, what you put in, and what you get out is your Y, your output. Now, it's saying here, okay, A, B, and C are all just numbers, right? They're coefficients. Our X and our Y are true variables. Now, it's saying A cannot be equal to zero. So not to write this part down, just want you to watch. Um, a can't be zero. What looks for why it can't be zero? Because if you had zero x squared plus bx plus c, what would zero times x squared be? And then do we even have to write that? And now is this quadratic anymore? No, it's now linear. So that's the reason why for a quadratic equation, we can't have a our leading coefficient, the first coefficient we have, can't have that be zero. Because then it's not even a quadratic equation anymore. So that's just kind of explaining what this is saying. So what is the degree of this equation? What's the degree of this equation? Two. That's the highest power we see there. The degree is two. Now we're going to graph this using a table. Okay? So we're going to make an x, y table, so I suggest making this pretty far to the left. x on the left, y on the right. And we're going to do seven x values. We're going to do negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to make a table. Make tables before for linear equations. Now we're going to make one for quadratic equations. Just kind of see and explore what this would look like. So we're going to do this for the equation y equals x squared. This is a quadratic equation, right? It doesn't have the b, x, and c, so that's okay. It doesn't have to. It still has the x squared. We need that power of 2 on the x. It's a quadratic equation. So how can we figure out what y is when x is negative 3? Okay, so we, we plug it into this, right? And we do that operation. So we take y is equal to x squared. In place of this x, we plug in negative 3. And remember, how do we always plug things in? Put it in parentheses, and then we square it. So now, what would negative 3 squared be? Like negative 3 times negative 3. Positive 9. So when x is negative 3, y is 9. Now, what can we do with that point, negative 3 comma 9? Can we graph it? Let's do that. We're going to go negative 3 which direction? Left. One, two, three. Which direction is the nine? Up. Oh, so it's positive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Boom. We made it. That's it. Okay. 
So how would we do this for when x is negative 2? The same thing, right? We just replace this negative 3 with negative 2. So that's just replacing the x. We're saying, okay, now when x is negative 2, what's y going to be? What's negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4. So we can throw that in the table and go over here and plot that too. So there's minus 2 plus, minus 2 plus 4 up. Negative 1, y is equal to negative 1 squared, which is what? So it's negative 1 minus 1. That one. Next would be what number? 0. Well, what is 0 squared? 0. 0 times anything is that, right? So we go 0, 0. What do we call this point, 0, 0? Ooh, money, the origin. And now we're going to start plugging in our positive numbers. So we keep going. 1, what's 1 times 1? One? 1. So notice that kind of, that was a repeat, right? A repeat y? Okay. Ooh. 2 squared is? It's going to point 2, comma 4. y equals 9. So when x is 3, y is 9. So we go over here and put that in 9. So now we've plotted all of our points. So when we plotted the points for a linear equation, we ended up connecting them, right? So we plotted points and then we connected them with lines. Okay. Here, can we connect with a line, like a straight line? No. Okay. It kind of curves, doesn't it? It makes kind of like a U shape. <coughs> What we can do less than what's right now, we get is we can. Ooh, I'll get to that in a second, actually. So we end up connecting this, and notice it's curved now. It's curved, and notice it still has an arrow because it keeps going forever and ever and ever. But I'm just not going to keep drawing it all the way up here and through the root and everything. That'd be impossible. Let's just say it keeps going forever, and it also follows up here and goes forever. And so it ends up curving and looks like this U shape. Okay, ends up curving and looking like this U shape. So it ends up curving, um, or a V is not curved. Yeah, but you're talking about the Yeah, but so is the V thing. Yes. Why it's curving? What? Is that partial function? I think not. I don't know how you can do it. Be an M. There's only one curve. <laughs> well, you 
thought that was in the news. It though. is. Oh, my goodness. That's a U. Yeah. Everyone is a U. That's yeah. a U. This is a scrunched U. And Curve's U is just so small, you can't oh see it. Oh, my goodness. Well. This is how I write my U. There's a point. There's a point <laughs> on the paper. Or it's a point. I yes. <laughs> and on a U, there's technically a point that it comes to. You just don't see it because it's so small. It's the same. You want to see the difference between a V and a U? Oh no. I don't think he knows. He's not a phone student. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> I just called it English teacher. See, 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 see,
called the vertex. Now, a vertex is a point. So how do we write points? <laughs> x comma y. So there's an x value and a y value for every point. So we can find the x value of the vertex using the equation x is equal to negative b over 2a from our a, b, and c of our quadratic. So it's negative b over 2a and we'll do our x. We use this. Now, x intercepts. Do you remember talking about the idea of x and y intercepts? Yes, what is I that? do. Why are we talking about this? It, it's where it crosses over the y or x axis. So if it's an x intercept, it's crossing the x axis. So the x intercept is when the graph crosses the x axis. And what must y be if it's crossing the x axis? Zero. Zero. It has to be zero. Now, do you guys remember how many solutions we had for these quadratic equations? What was the power of a quadratic? Two. Two. How many solutions did you have when you solved them? Two. Two. In the very last section we did, um, last week, <laughs> we ended up having two solutions, okay? okay. Um, and so for a, um, for a parabola, there can be either zero, one, or up to two x intercepts. It doesn't have to be two x intercepts. So there can be 0, 1, or 2 x intercepts because of that. Now, all of the um, all of the linear equations we had ended up having an x intercept. Eventually, they crossed it. Eventually, that line went far enough, except for when it's a horizontal line, our hoi horizontal line has to start at 0, y equals 1. Okay? Yeah. Um, so, horizontal lines have to slope at 0 and y equals 1. Now, one way to find intercepts is to factor. We learned that way. So we ended up solving for x when y was 0. Because we said it equal to 0, so y was 0. We'll talk about that again. This doesn't always work, but we'll learn more ways later. For now, we're going to stick with factors. Don't worry too much. So, I'm going to show you guys three graphs of what it looks like for 0 x intercepts, 1 x intercepts, Three x intercepts. So I want you guys to draw these three little sketch graphs. Okay, they don't have to be perfect. My eyes are vanilla. Touches right here, 
and it bounces right off. That was like the one we saw that we started with, the first one we did today. Same kind of thing. It just touches once, whoop, bounces right off. Yeah. And then you can have another one that could open down, and it would move like this. It kind of looks like a reindeer. You've got antlers on them. Draw a triangle and you can draw antlers together. Draw a triangle and you can draw antlers together. Yeah, it's the reindeer. So cute. Okay. The dirt deer. Okay. Um, two exeter sets. How many times must Frosty X axis? Twice. Twice. So it could look like this. Oh my goodness, this is looking awesome. Thanks. What about something like this? How many times does this one cross the x-axis? How many times does it cross the x-axis? Two. So even though it crosses the y-axis, it doesn't matter to us. The fact is that it crosses the x-axis twice. That's pretty fun. Ooh, it got tricky. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm doing that face. I know you got to fix this stuff. Questions on this part? Okay. So on a, on the next page, we're gonna walk through one example. Okay. We're gonna walk through one example here, um, and it's going to be to find the x-intercepts in the vertex and to try and sketch this graph. Okay. But not using a table like we did in the first one. Ooh, there we go. There we go. Awesome. So our first step is to find the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts. Okay, so when we find the x-intercept, what do you know about y? When x crosses the x-axis, y is zero. Okay, so if y is zero, then we can take this equation and substitute y for zero. So I can do that, right? Heads up, you want to write pretty small in this question. If you write big, you are not going to have much chance. You want to write pretty small. Okay, it's six x okay plus five equals zero. Okay, and this is to find our x-intercepts. So I'm just going to title that right there. So find our x-intercepts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we've seen this kind of equation before. Now, right? We saw it last chapter. How do we solve this? We make our x right. It's a trinomial. When we for GCF, we don't have one. We can make our x. Okay, now you guys have a little bit more space to the left of this number one, just a little bit, not tons, a little bit. And that's where I would write your x if I were you. So I'm just going to write it like kind of the closest I can get to that. But I would write it to the left if you want to write it. And what's going to go at the top of this x? Five. Five. Because five times one is five. What's going to be the bottom of this? The two positive factors of five, nothing else by five, five have six. Five and one. Does it matter where you put five first or one first? No. No. Okay. Five times one is five. Five plus one. Can you use a torch here? Okay. So we'll write x plus 5 times x plus what? 1 equals 0. Because that's what's in that equation. Now from here, you might say, Mr. Kyle, well, I know how to solve this already. I don't need to write the equations out. That's the easy one for the time being. Okay? But if you want to, you can write out these equations as well. Do x plus 5 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0. And how would we solve this first one? Subtract 5, x is equal to negative 5. Solve the second one? Subtract 1, and x is equal to negative 1. Now these are our x-intercepts. So what's the value of y at these points? 0. So can we plot these? Yeah. So we're going to go to negative 1 on the x-axis, and we're going to plot that point. And where would we plot the next one? Negative 5 on the same x-axis. And those are going to be where this crosses this x-axis. Those are our x-intercepts. Not in my class. Oh, no. Sorry, I'm not going to get a time. It is my 
it'll show you that what happened. So then now we need to find the vertex. So we found our x-intercepts. We need one more piece of information to graph this. We need to find our vertex. So how do we go about finding our vertex? Is we find the x value first. <coughs> Who remembers the equation for the x value? Or you can look back at the page. Negative b over something. Negative b over 2a. So we take our a, b, a and b from this equation from our original equation. So x is equal to what's normal b? Six. Six. So we plug that in. We have two is two, and what's a in our our equation? One. So we plug that in. Can we simplify that now? I'll set that one up. Yeah. Okay, there's all good. I'm going to set that up. Okay. So, what is negative of 6? It's a negative of a positive 6. The opposite of that. What is, what is it on the top? Negative 6, right? So, negative of 6 is oh. negative 6. Okay. That's 2 times 1. Two. So, you can simplify this. So now that we found the x value, we need to figure out what the y value is. How did we say we will find that y value? Plug it in for x in our original equation. So we take y is equal to, instead of x squared, negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 5. Questions on why you plug it in this way? And why it looks like this? We will finish this problem on Tuesday. Good luck to those competing in this group context. I'm wearing my socks. I'm going to go different. You are in my socks. I'm going to do it. You don't get to the You're going to be scared. I'm going to try to the stand to the right of my seat, by the way. Is it pretty fresh or?